How does encryption work and how can you break it? I get asked that all the time and there's a lot of different kinds of encryption, so there's no one answer. But let's start off with one of the most common encryption standards, RSA. It's an asymmetric encryption that's used in all kinds of stuff like web browsing, email, pretty much every VPN. So first, let me show you the concept of how that works and then we'll get into the details of how it works and knowing that, how can it be broken? So the way RSA works is basically, I'm going to give you this open lock for you to encrypt your data. So put your message in here and lock it up. So then they put their message in there and then using the lock we gave them, they can encrypt their data. But of course, now they're also locked out of it and no one can decrypt it, not even them. And what makes it one way encryption is of course, I'm the only one with the key to unlock it. So then I do just that, I unlock their message and I got their message without anyone ever having been able to see it. Now the concept is pretty straightforward, but how do we do that in practice? Well, for that, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math. Let me show you. Okay, so for RSA first, I need to send you two numbers. Now these two numbers are specific. They are mathematically related and you're going to use these to encrypt your information. So in this example, the clear text will be three and two, but in practice, that would be like a credit card number or anything else really. Now, the first thing we're going to do is raise each number in our message to the power of five, the first number here, which gives us these two numbers. Next, we want to divide each one by the second number 14 and I'm going to write down the remainder, which here we get five and four. Now this new set five and four is our cipher text. That's what you're going to send me because I have another set of numbers. And in this set of numbers, the second one is the same, but the other one, there's only one number here that I can use that if I plug it in and do the exact same math with a cipher text, I will end up with a clear text. In this case, the only number that this will work with is 11. So we do the math again and we end up with these large numbers. And after some upside down calculator, I get the remainder and I end up with three and two, the exact same as our clear text. Now, why does this work and how could you break this? Well, of those sets of numbers, the common one, 14, there's a specific way we get that number. And that is that it's always a product of two prime numbers. So if you can factor that number, bring it down to the two prime numbers we use to get that number, you can plug it into this formula and come up with the other two numbers in this set. So you can figure out what that magic number is. You might think that'll be pretty easy if there's only one set of prime numbers that you can factor it to. With small numbers like this, sure. But in practice, this is what a 1024 bit number looks like. And you might think, well, surely computers can factor it quickly. Well, 1999 was the first time someone was able to factor a 155 bit RSA number. And it wasn't until 2016 that someone was able to factor a 220 bit number. And barely last year, someone factored a 250 bit number. Remember the one I showed you earlier was 1024 bit. And that's because the standard is at least 2048 bit we can easily make an RSA number larger than this. And though we still have a long way to go to be able to break RSA, there is an emerging technology out there that will break RSA. And if you know what that is, let me know in the comments below. And of course, follow for more security content. Thanks.